Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Restaurants employ over 15 million people nationwide. And two-thirds of all restaurants are independently owned and not part of big chains. Yet, currently, these small businesses are not represented in government relief negotiations. Roar is working to change that by fighting for relief opportunities for all restaurants. Roar is advocating for an eight-point plan in New York State that will allow restaurants to reopen and rehire when the time comes. Dozens of industry leaders have signed onto this plan, like Namwa Tea Parlor, Field Trip, Momofuku, and many more of your favorites. You can join them at change.org by searching for Roar, relief opportunities for all restaurants. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Snacky Tunes. I am one half your host, Darren Bresnitz. I hope everyone is staying safe and staying sane, taking some time for themselves, maybe starting a new cooking project or binging on some TV shows, or just taking a moment to do nothing, breathe deeply, and just reflect on what's going on. We are all in this together, and I know that we are going to get through this stronger once we get through this on the other side. We are really excited to be joined by our good friend, longtime uh, compatriot, colleague, and other Heritage Radio Network host, Kathy Irway. She famously uh, wrote a blog about not eating out in New York about a decade plus ago, and it seems more relative than ever for us to talk to her about how to cook at home, uh, what that means for you physically, mentally, socially, uh, financially, and how the best way to really stock your pantry. So Kathy, thank you so much for sitting down with us. And then we dig deep into the archives to one of our Dinner with the Band uh, early, early, early music guest, Pigeon John, he came to the studio. He gave one of the best performances, one of the most fun performances, and we just think it's full of a lot of bright sunshine and hope and, and just sort of what we need right now. So everyone, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Snacky Tunes on Heritage Radio Network. We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, Snacky Tunes. you take a seat and listen close today is a story by the young man that you seem to know born in omaha then later his mom moved to the west coast inglewood to be exact and that was a shocking fact folks neighborhood pyrus would roll up in crews and try to jack him he would try to make them laugh and pop like do a backspin sometimes they would stall him out and other times he would be scrapping this made him into a man to never back down when attacked and now Break it down, can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Oh, 
okay. The little boy from Omaha grew tall. Didn't have game with girls, not at all. Didn't have braids, didn't know how to ball. But he heard the melody and that was the call. Didn't have a beat machine, had no gear. How could he write the songs, make them hear? Use everything I was a black down here. Pause, mix it for the rest of the year. Now he had beats, now he had rhymes. But he wasn't good yet, took some time. Went to the good life over mic one night and saw that he wasn't very good at all. Oh, no. But he never stopped trying. One night he blew it up, I'm not lying. Ever since then the kid never stopped crying. Still trying to make him laugh, just get dying. Snacky Tunes. I am one half your host, Darren Bresnitz. We are with our good old dear friend, Kathy Irway, food writer, you know, radio show host, author, all around uh, bon vivant of mm-hmm. the culinary world. Can we say that? Yeah, that works too. <laughs> is there a female? Is that is, it, is that just a catch-all term? I think it's fine. Yeah, it means good it, lifer, basically. Good bon lifer. Vivant. Yeah. Bon vivant. Um, so. We are so excited to have you on, um, and because when we met, I don't know, a decade ago, I don't how, however long ago, um, you were. I'm gonna say it was more than that, but yeah, more than that, more mm-hmm. than that. in the in the mid aughts, um, right. you were in the middle of this, what seemed crazy at the time, or just a wild experiment called not eating out in New York, mm-hmm. and I'd love for you to give a little background to our listeners at home who maybe haven't heard of it or maybe had heard of it, but didn't know what it was. Sure. So back in 2006, I was like a young 20 something working like, uh, you know, a day job nine to five. Um, and I actually, like I tumbled through a few jobs. (laughs) I was never very good at (laughs) sticking with one job, but, um, (laughs) basically I wasn't, you know, I wasn't super, um, well off. Um, I would, I would be making, you know, a a simple, like sort of standard, um, base salary for entry level folks. And, um, but I was also really excited about food and I started reading, um, a few blogs. This was like back in the mid aughts when blogs were like this, like super cool, uh, <laughs> it seems like a subversive <laughs> thing back then, right? Because it was yeah, it was <laughs> anyway. like I'm gonna write stuff and people yeah. can read it, and you can't control what I say, <laughs> right? Yeah, and and also as somebody who wanted to be um, a writer and wasn't really getting, you know, I, I wanted to be a food writer actually, and so I would pitch, I would you know read up. I actually took a like a media bistro class on like how to be a food writer, and I would oh, pitch man. to editors. Media bistro. Seriously. Yeah. 2005, I think. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I would never hear back from editors at like food and wine or gourmet or rest in peace and, um, elsewhere. Hmm. And so I just started to write my own blog because I was like, you know what? I have a lot of, uh, like, I love food, so I'm going to write a blog. And, um, you know, at this time I saw like most of the conversation around food was all about this cool chef, this cool new restaurant, that chef is moving on to open that cool restaurant. And, you know, a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of food writing is about this sort of the business of uh, the food and beverage industry, which is awesome. But um, I just kind of felt like I didn't have the budget to really engage in that in, in, in a super uh, 
uh, you know, involved way. And mm -hmm. I, I just really didn't, honestly. And um, even if, you know, I went to a food truck all the time, I still was like, and, and then I had this revelation. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm like spending a lot of money just for like this kind of cool taco, right? This new taco. Wouldn't it be so much fun to make tacos with my friends? And mm -hmm. instead of like have to wait for service and like scream at each other in this crowded place, we could like, we could just have, uh, we can make things. And um, so I started my blog called Not Eating Out in New York. And it was all about cooking adventures. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to see how long I can go without eating out in a restaurant, like as a strict rule. And I thought it might be funny if like it didn't work out after a month and I like caved. But actually, as I got used to the rhythms of just everyday cooking, which is something that a lot of people might be doing right now, um, mm -hmm. you know, it just became so much more easy to get the hang of it. And I, I, I found it really fulfilling and fun um, and also saved me a lot of money. So I kept with that for two years. I mean, that's yeah. absolutely incredible. <laughs> to have done that for two years out of your own volition. What were some of the biggest learnings yeah. that you took from back then that you've carried with you and are probably very important of right. what's going on today? I'm like having, I'm like remembering so much of what I was at first going through. Um, I, I mean, I think that there's two different things, um, two different categories of home cooking. The one sort of fun project based cooking, and then the mm -hmm. everyday I need to I need to eat something to like feed myself and survive cooking. Um, and you know, especially when you have like a family or like other people to feed, you know, those things can be very distinct. So uh, a lot of people, I think, approach cooking from this like big sort of. Uh, it's going to be this big to do, um, you know, they're entertaining, they're having guests over. So it's going to be something exciting. It's going to be something new. I'm going to have to learn how to make carnitas and it's going to take five hours or something like that. Um, and that's great. And you can do those things once in a while, but in reality, you're going to be using up a lot of leftovers from that throughout the week. You're going to be um, just incorporating bits and pieces of, of whatever is left over and, you know, not, not even just prepared leftovers, but like, you know, a half a squash, you know, that you have, or some other random like thing that you have left or herbs that you wouldn't, you know, you don't know what to do with, but you really need to use it because you don't want to waste it. So everyday cooking is a little bit different and it's very much more improvisational, which is fun. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have to imagine that, people have been reaching out to you um, <laughs> and asking for advice. And we're going to get to the, the cooking part of it a little bit later, but I think it's, you know, food has become such a, a social piece of our society, even, you know, versus what it was five, 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what have people been asking you about, um, especially when it comes to socialization or even, the the mental realignment when yeah. you're forced to cook at home or eat at home all the time um so uh, people do worry about the socialization i mean that's when i started doing the blog everyone's like well how are you gonna have a social life and you know <laughs> I, I was like actually i had so much more fun with friends because you know we weren't kicked out of a restaurant and you know we i don't know it just became like this were you getting kicked out of a lot of restaurants no, no, I mean, after your meal is over, <laughs> I'm, right? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a lot of restaurants, they really try to, like, boot you out. and. You know, oh, yeah, they're like, they're like, so is it ready to take the check? Yeah. Is the check ready? Um, but, yeah, but you went you went through this whole socialization uh, right. you know, rearrangement. Totally. Um, uh, so, I mean, I can say for then, back in normal times when we weren't all quarantined, um, it just led to a richer relationship with friends because you're making things together and you get to see different sides of people through that. Um, and, and yeah, maybe that's relevant today too because I'm seeing a lot of people like their everyday cooking instead of like their fancy like show off cooking and their like feeds. And that's yeah. really exciting too. So yeah. I mean, it definitely is in the Instagram feeds a lot more humble and realistic uh -huh. foods at home. Yeah. Um, 
suddenly the truth but, is coming you know, out, right? <laughs> the, the truth is coming out that it's a lot more uh, pastas and rice dishes or simple salads and things like that. But mm-hmm. you, you bring up a good point of people sharing food, right? Mm-hmm. Of people still mm-hmm. interacting over food, even if they can't physically be together. Yeah. Um, what advice do you offer to people who still want to have the social aspect of eating, even if they have to practice social distancing? Well, I guess we're all like trying to, we're all like discovering this like virtual hangout. <laughs> I'm trying mm-hmm. to do that tonight with some friends having a virtual like happy hour and cook cooking or eating mm. uh, a thing. I don't know what it is. It's not a potluck because I was like, wait, how would a potluck work? We can show each <laughs> other like, here, this is the huge amount of potatoes I made. What did you make? Oh, great. I can't mix it with what I'm eating. Um, you can that, each that. make smaller versions of five different dishes and each yeah. person provides a recipe, right? You know, this is really exciting. We can do stuff like, hey, somebody's ch- somebody chose a recipe and we're all going to make it mm. sort of like a book club. I don't know. I love that. Right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, especially in New York, and I was guilty of, of this too, living there, um, you know, that kitchen is just another storage room or mm-hmm. a place where you get something out of the fridge that is possibly either a beverage or just like a snack. Mm-hmm. Any advice for people who are mentally preparing to really get into the kitchen for the first time? Yeah, I think maybe like cleaning out and seeing what you have. Uh, you might be surprised. If you're someone like me, you probably have a lot more than you think and mm. um, a lot of things that can be useful. So like if you have – if you're the kind of person who might have like five jars of mustard that you didn't know about, <laughs> now is a good time to do a little inventory. <laughs> I seriously do. I don't know what happened. And spices. Because all oh, yeah. things are like – I actually think that it's really great to have like unique ingredients that will – like be the spice of everyday cooking's life. And it's like a low kind of like um, uh, low risk, you know, thing. If you can find something that is exciting in your own pantry that you never thought to use, then you don't have to go out and get it. Right. <laughs> so right. Do a little inventory check, but also, yeah, to make room for, okay, here's where I want to put my essentials, like my, I don't know, whatever it might be, pasta that you like, um, your grains, your rice, um, kind of just make room for everything that uh, that that you need to grab on a daily basis, and and maybe do that fridge deep clean too, which I still should do. Yeah, um, beyond just examining and exploring and resetting the space, it can be daunting to actually cook a couple meals a day for yourself and your family. Um, what is the mental preparation that you have done, or some advice that you could share for? being in the kitchen and the time that it takes to really put up food uh, for yourself and your loved ones. Well, that thing, it, like it seems daunting, but actually I feel like it's much easier to cook like every day, like five days a week or four to five days a week than it is to cook like one or two times a week because mm. it's kind of like you're starting from scratch if you do it only occasionally. But when you cook more continuously, you're never really starting from scratch. You have you have an idea of, of what is in there from the last meal and you carry that into so like for example, it's you made carnitas and now you can put that on rice if you don't have any more taco uh, sh- like uh, tortillas left. Um, you can make a bowl. you can do you know you can take some lettuce that y- you made a salad with and make a salad with uh, the roasted squash. I don't know, something like that. Um, throw a hard boiled egg in there and call it a salad meal. I don't know. So it's, it's a lot easier, I think, when you do it continuously than oh, yeah. do it occasionally, for sure. I mean, and I'm actually, about to have yeah. a, uh, a real leftover end of the week salad, mm-hmm. rice yeah. bowl, something. Right. And I was like, oh, that was Tuesday and that was Thursday. Yeah. Uh, what was that last point you were going to make? Oh, actually, so when I did um, my, when my book launched, the first book, which is Ar- The Art of Eating In, I asked a bunch of, uh, I guess now you would call it influencers, but then it was like, uh, you know, cool folks I admire <laughs> um, to to take on this like <laughs> this one week challenge. It's called like the week of eating in challenge and like see what happens. And so a bunch of uh, fellow writers or like food foodies um, did this. And I think that it was like it's a revelation when you do it for like one week because then you're like, oh, 
okay, now I can get the hang of it. And everyone kind of figures out in their own way. Like I can't tell you like how that's going to work. Like you're going to figure out for yourself, like that you like a salad or you're, or you're like that rice bowl, like you're saying, mm. or it's for me, it might be like a kanji or like it's a uh, fried rice or, you know, I don't know. Everyone has you find their own. your own way in the kitchen. Exactly. When you do it over yeah. and over again. Um, Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break and we're actually going to get into the cooking part about this and, and, you know, how to approach shopping and what people can do, especially during the coronavirus pandemic, because I, it's probably shifted a little bit about the approach. And I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But Mm -hmm. first, we're going to have a song from the archives here on Snacky Tunes on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Hello and welcome back to Snacky Tunes. We are with James Beard, award-winning food writer, Kathy Irway. Thank you so much for taking the time to give us not just the shopping tips and the food prep tips, but the mental tips of what it means to be eating in um, and people shifting their realities with their relationship with food in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, we've talked a lot about the mental part of it. And now I want to get into a little bit more of the practical part of it, which is building out your kitchen and prepping your pantry for these times. And we talked a little bit about a deep clean and assessing of what you have, but now if you're going out to the Mm -hmm. 
grocery store and you have been shopping in a while or you've never really done grocery shopping or you haven't done grocery shopping in tougher times, what is the mental approach that you should have for something like this? Well, don't panic, I would say, and grab all the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but so I think that here's where, I mean, and this can change like any day now, but like right now, the food supply is pretty okay. Like, um, I, I think that the one thing that could happen is that international trade could become disrupted. And so therefore all those, you know, Chilean, like grown fruits or whatever, you know, like, uh, avocados, perhaps those things might get cut off. But, um, for the most part, pro productivity, um, is still, fine and we're seeing like short-term shortages in the retail level which means they'll just get restocked i guess um the next time they they get uh you know uh, uh their regular sort of inventory mm -hmm. so I, I think that it's it's good to keep that in mind when you go to the grocery store um but also because you do want to limit your movements you don't want to like make too many trips right so mm -hmm. and, and also to protect the workers there, you don't want to just run in every time you feel like it. So, I mean, yeah, it makes sense to be efficient about your shopping. Um, would, would you advise once a week, once every two weeks? I mean, what do you think? Um, yeah, you could get you by. Could... It depends on how many mouths you're feeding, but I could get by it. I would like to challenge myself, actually. <laughs> I think you could get by easily like two weeks. Maybe once not every easily. two weeks. You have to figure it out. Yeah. yeah, that's a I good mean, goal. Because, you know, a lot of people are going in and seeing empty frozen food, box food, prepared food, and things like that. But should people be also looking to balance it out with fresh produce? Absolutely. You know, what are the sort of the yeah. fresh foods oh. that have a longer shelf life if you're trying to limit yourself to once a week or twice a week? I think that... Uh... A most fresh food because you you can eat the ones that aren't you know going to need to uh, be on the back burner immediately right so you should get that fresh lettuce or that um, fresh leafy green of any type and then um, but also get the cabbage because that's one of those ingredients that will definitely keep for a couple of weeks um, the winter squash I mean it is winter right now so we have those things it makes a lot of sense to grab them root vegetables for sure all kinds. Now it's a great time to get um, familiar with things like, I don't know, parsnips, rutabaga, turnips, a lot of fun stuff there. Um, so yeah, those are things you can suck up. Definitely like don't shy away from the fresh produce while you're there. It makes no sense to kind of like let some um, fresh produce sort of perish on the shelves while everyone's grabbing all the frozen or canned goods. Um, you know, it. you should definitely like eat the ones that you need to right away. Um, and I think that's, that's a lot of fear. I can understand it because people think maybe I won't be able to go out again. Maybe I won't be able to, maybe there won't mm. be any food left. So I need to really like sock up. Um, and I think that we've heard that message a lot though. So hopefully that, you know, just to balance that out, I would say that definitely, you know, don't shy away from the fresh produce. Um, at the very least, you can freeze it for later use. You can throw it into a soup and then freeze that for later use. I mean, there's really no reason I can think of to not get fresh produce if it's there. Yeah, I know that the uh, mad people um, are pushing and supporting a million-gallon soup drive and creation mm. for that very reason for food spoilage avoidance. So right. that if you are going to buy fresh food and it does start to get a little bit less desirable to eat, then turn that thing into soup and then either make it for yourself or for your community. Right, right. Or eat it right then. <laughs> or eat it right then. Um, it I know first. that you also are focused on things that are beyond the essentials. And I'd love for you uh -huh. to expand on what you mean by that when you're going shopping. Yeah, well, I think that by, you know, not even um, by choice, you're going to have to like go um, beyond your familiar routine, like go beyond the ingredients that you're familiar with anyway, because mm. as you can see there, you're going to, it's going to be sold out of um, the things that 
some of the things you're used to getting. You might not get that chicken piece that you want. You might have to get, I don't know, um, a whole chicken. You might have to get, I don't know, chicken liver. I don't know if that doesn't totally right. gross you out. It's, I mean, I didn't mean to gross you out. It, you can get like um, pork, I love chicken ground, liver. Right. Or like you can get ground pork and maybe that'll mm-hmm. like be exciting. You can learn something new from it. So you have to be flexible and open-minded. And actually that'll lead to um, – what, what I was um, wanting to say, which is like, you know, it'll lead to that sort of sense of of fun, excitement and discovery when you're cooking. And um, I think that that's something that you kind of need when you're going to be cooking just every day. It, it, you know, to be monotonous, I guess some people would be OK with eating like the same thing week after week. But I know a lot of people, if they're going to be eating every day, you know, cooking, um, at home, at least I wanted something, you know, some surprises along the way. So it's great to just grab the things that strike your fancy or take the things that, you know, you don't normally get because you have to, cause you, you know, I heard from a friend the other day who had to, um, he didn't have to, but you know, he wanted to get pasta and there was no other normal shapes of pasta that he was used to. So he got manicotti, which is those long mm. sort of like logs. And then he made, um, he couldn't find ricotta. So you just like learn the, that like ricotta is actually whole milk and either vinegar or lemon juice and you curdle it. And so he made a stuffed manicotti with tomato sauce. And it's like, wow, I can do that. And I just learned something special and it, it'll give you, um, yeah, I think it'll give you more motivation and uh, oh my God. Yeah, that's cook. amazing. I actually have whole milk that's about to go, so maybe uh-huh. I'll just make some ricotta. Yep, yep, totally. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, everyone's budget is a little bit different for this. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, what is a good way to think about grocery shopping and essentials when you're working with a budget or for different budgets? I love cooking with the thought to like maxing, ma- maximizing the, the lowest budget into like the most amazing meal. <laughs> so that's like something I just geek out about. Um, like on my blog, I always have like this little cost calculator. Um, mm. So so it's great to like think about the things that are just naturally cheap um, because they're hearty. Um, and, you know, so winter vegetables is like chock full of, like of this type of food. So this whole category of like, you know, winter squashes, winter cabbage, all those funky root vegetables that I mentioned earlier. Now is a really great time to to buy them up. I mean, it's like usually even at the farmer's market, you know, these are like, you know, prime ingredients. They're organic. They were small, you know, farm grown. And um, they're usually like one to two dollars a pound. I mean, it doesn't get much cheaper than that. So um, I would shop with um, an eye to those kinds of produce. So don't leave produce out of the equation as well yeah. as dried goods in bulk. So a lot of people think, oh, I need to eat cheaply. I need to grab a lot of cans of, you know, green beans or something like that. No, just like, you know, look at the cabbage and super dense in nutrients. And um, yeah, it's cheaper. So I would, um, yeah, I would go to the produce aisle and then also load up on the dry grains, whichever one you like, um, and also the dry beans, which everyone is talking about. So I just feel like, yeah. Yeah. You've heard, you've heard that. Are... You've heard that. <laughs> they'll, they'll last they'll for last forever. forever. <laughs> they will. They really will. Um, and they're much cheaper than if you get them individually canned. And also they tend to be better for you and they're less waste. So, I mean, yeah, all the way. <laughs> and also if you're so, produce so- if your supermarket has those like dry goods things, so like you can fill up on nuts or like something like that, I would say go for that. It tends to be a good budget option. So you mentioned a little bit about um, being adventurous and flexing your culinary uh, familiarness um, out the window and doing something that would be a little bit out of your comfort zone. Uh What sort of specialty projects would you recommend for times like this should i learn how to bake bread should i learn how to make stew you know like what are the things that are like um that maybe you don't have normally six or seven hours to get into a a, a (laughs) project 
but then also, you know, is affordable and also you can eat and will add to your pantry. Well, in normal circumstances, I mean, it could be anything that you really just are excited about at the moment. But for thinking about this time in particular, I would get familiar with just how to how to make a basic soup from anything, because then that's such an easy like repository for like your your, you know, your spinach that needs to be eaten and so forth. Um, so, or your leftover beans or even bread. I mean, so get to know soups really well. Um, a simple one is just like a, uh, potato leek soup and you can swap in whatever you want for that potato or like, um, a French potage, which is basically just any, um, it, it's hearty vegetables, you know, a mirepoix of like onion, celery, celery, and carrot. You can add potatoes, um, you can make that parsnip one day or rutabaga. You can make that and, you know, pumpkin or winter squash. Um, you can even make that beans and you pu- puree it. Um, so this is a pureed soup. You, you know, at the end of the day, you don't even know what's in it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a different <laughs> little, I like, I, it's kind of like stone soup, right? It's like, right. <laughs> whenever I make soup, it's like, um, it has you know, stuff. stuff that I had left over. And then I decided to look at my pimenton from, from, you know, my smoked, smoked paprika from Spain. And I said, oh, yeah. you know, that's the magic no, formula this time. <laughs> oh yeah. So I don't want to leave without there being a little bit of hope mm-hmm. because it's scary right now. And we are probably still in the early stages of heading into a long haul. Um, is there a silver lining through this? Do you see on the other side with food or cooking or people understanding produce more or how to shop for themselves? Is there a silver lining here that people can lean into during these tough times? Yeah. I mean, aside from just being more comfortable at everyday cooking, which is certainly a plus, um, I think it'll make people think harder about food and where it um, you know, their, sh- their food shopping and the people behind our whole food system. I think that that'll give you a deeper appreciation for food. It'll, it'll make you a more informed eater and consumer of, of, of food. And um, that's certainly what happened to me when I did this whole two years. I just, I got really into like uh, the good food movement as a result, just because I, I can't not, you know, you can't, you can't look away from everything, all the people, all the hands that touch your food, um, all through the chain. So, and, and, you know, I think that it was just making you a more conscious eater. I know that sounds like cheesy and saccharine or whatever, but, uh, I think it's probably for the better for the whole food system and, uh, for the better of the workers who are from the farmers to the processors, to the retail grocery workers who, you know, a lot of people are thinking about right now because you know they're on the front line so to speak so i think that is a good silver lining yeah yeah and you're already starting to see the shift you know minnesota michigan vermont these states have already uh classified grocery workers as emergency workers and they're getting a whole new list of benefits that you probably wouldn't have seen um, oh my god yeah without the shift and it's it's awful that it has to get to this part of oh, the world yeah. society. Um, but I think it's going to be tough to get people to change their mind about um, the importance of these workers to our food system after everything's done. Right. Once you look deeply into something, it's like you yeah. need to have to care about it yeah. a lot more. Well, Kathy, I cannot thank you enough. If people want to check out your writing or what you're thinking about these days or listen to your radio show or read any of your books or just, you know, get inspired by the food that you make, where can they go? Where can they find you online? Sure. Um, My blog is called Not Eating Out in NY, but you can follow me at Kathy Irway on Twitter um, and Instagram. One word. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, Look, we're going to keep the music rolling just because we need a little music in our lives right now uh, more than ever. So here's a song from the archives, and then we'll do a live performance also from the archives here on Snacky Tunes on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Okay, you ready? You want to start? I'm not going to play. Sucking the deep It wasn't me, man
on the corner mesmerized. It wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner, you were just my size. Go! On the corner just the other day. It wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner, you were passing my way. It wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner, mesmerized. It wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner, you were just my size. It wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner, R in the A. It wasn't me, man. And when you're in my way, it wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner, come to ride. It wasn't me, man. I saw you on the corner. Let's go. Hey. Drum machine, stop. You know my God, here comes the monster man. They be strictly sickly. Other girls that be on the corner man. They be strictly deadly. You know my God, here comes the monster man. They be strictly sickly. Other girls that be on the corner man. They be strictly deadly. You know my God, here comes the monster man. They be strictly sickly. Other girls that be on the corner man. They be strictly deadly. You know my God. Restaurants employ over 15 million people nationwide, and two-thirds of all restaurants are independently owned and not part of big chains. Yet currently, these small businesses are not represented in government relief negotiations. Roar is working to change that by fighting for relief opportunities for all restaurants. Roar is advocating for an eight-point plan in New York State that will allow restaurants to reopen and rehire when the time comes. Dozens of industry leaders have signed on to the plan, like Nam Wa Tea Parlor, Field Trip, Momofuku, and many more of your favorites. You can join them at change.org by searching for Roar, relief opportunities for all restaurants. You're listening to Snacky Tunes. I am your host, DJ Never Forget. Uh, we, all, as always, we like to time the pizza to come out right when we're about to do an interview, even though we have yeah. all this downtime. <laughs> Um, Eating mad pizza. Uh, we have Pigeon John in studio. Why don't we go around the room? We'll go this way and do introductions. Hello, my name is Pigeon John from LA, California. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Evie Jane from Canada. Erica D from Canada as well. Uh, and collectively, they make up the Pigeon John touring band yeah. group ensemble. Yeah. We're Pigeon yeah. John and the Pigeon Ladies. Oh, right. <laughs> We've yeah. also been referred to as that. Pigeon so. Ladies. Pigeon Ladies. Yeah. Favorably referred to that? I like it. Yeah, okay. which is kind of nasty. They don't mind too yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, John, you have a new record come out in October, but yes. we met uh, a few years ago when you did the very first season of Dinner with the Band. Yeah. And so fun. I was really excited. Best burger of my life, still. Still? Today. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to let Sam know. Three years running. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well, good. I'm, that's awesome. And the fries. Mm-hmm. Wait, what happened to the dudes? Your backup guys? Oh, they're back in LA. They're back in LA. Yeah, working on music and stuff. They're uh, their solo works and stuff. But, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you're on tour for about a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just came from Boston. Yes, did you get a chance? Boston. What do you think? Great, right next door to the ball park, and uh, great people. They're very wise out there. Kind of sharp. The cr- the crowd kind of moves kind of slow. Yeah. Um, but it's just the weather and their knowledge. <laughs> but I like Boston, and I got to meet Erica's uh, beautiful family out there. Oh, very nice. This yeah. is, uh, Some mm-hmm. Italians. Six sisters. No, no, this was just Auntie Cheryl and um, Uncle Carl and mm. kids. And so you, have an, you literally have an army around the, the country of mm, family. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ready to move in mass. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so the new record, Dragon Slayer, is out, and I enjoy it. Thank uh, you. And it's, it's really fun, and it's in line with the other music you made, which is really clever, whimsical kind of hip-hop that uh, is laid back to from the West Coast. Man, Chet Baker. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you talk about the inspiration for this record? Um, I, I <clears throat> inspiration. I guess uh, I wanted to do a record, um, just writing on the music and the words, and going to Irve Salters to to traditionally produce the record mm-hmm. versus um, 
beats and, and beats and rhymes and stuff. So that was the first time I did it like this uh, for the whole record, and it's it was a it was a blast. But the inspiration, I guess, I wanted a more quieter hip hop album because I felt like I was yelling all the time. So I wanted to calm down a bit. I definitely got that. Just it's relax. Really laid back in like a good way. Like it's kind of like a Sunday morning record. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, I, I enjoy it, and uh, the themes are the same, women problem, hanging out in your backyard, <clears throat> family. Yeah. It's really good. Uh, when you're in this, now that you have a new pro- like a new production type of uh, schedule, what did you find like the differences between doing yourself or how, how it affected creating this record? Um, ask, ask that one more time. Oh, okay. Now that, well, you said that you joined up with a producer. Which yes. Is the first time. Mm-hmm. So how did you think it affected the record and, and writing it as opposed uh, to? Um, it took, like, most of the stuff was um, me in the studio alone in the bedroom mm-hmm. and stuff. But he, he played all the songs on piano, kind of worked it out and kind of showed me kind of what I was accidentally writing. So I kind of learned just, you know, just watching him like, oh, wow. So I think that was the best part, kind of breaking down the songs and kind of building them. Uh, from scratch that's awesome uh With did some, you uh, what did you two eat together while working together mm, a he has meal. a sweet wife and a beautiful family so uh they're from paris so a lot of parisian food amazing coffee knowledge just straight edge kind how, of how do you cook knowledge just hang out with Irve salters man gotcha um Woo! so we're gonna have you play a few songs in studio okay so what is the uh the first track that you're gonna perform the bomb the bomb the Great. bomb which is, I believe, the lead single off the record, mm-hmm. uh, which is fantastic. Thank you very much. Dragon Slayer is out now. <clears throat> and, right uh, now. Right now. Get it now. You actually get it right now. Right now. While, while he's performing. Uh, Pigeon John live on Snacky Tunes. Yes, indeed. All right. Are you guys ready? <clears throat> yeah. I'm ready. Pizza in the in Yay! The awesome. Let's Good. do it, kids. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hot damn. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa. Check it. Oh, oh, okay. Wake up in the morning to the clear blue sky. Turn up the music when I hop in the ride. The windows down, let the whole world see. Can't nobody rock it like little old me. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. I got my chunks and my dickies and I put it on black. Banging Sinatra in the black Cadillac. My old lady hanging out the whole window. Everybody looking when we walk in slow. I'm the bomb. I'm in about to blow up. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. Come on. Whoa. Yeah. Everybody singing now. Whoa. Yeah. Everybody singing now. Everybody singing now. Okay, now one for the money and a two for the show. But three to be a legend even if I'm po. I ain't chasing nothing, you gon' have to catch me. And if you wanna taste, you gon' have to pay a fee. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. Two on my molly ring walls and my little scarecrows. Where they hear my racket, where they all hit the flow. Ladies strike a pose, come up in the front row. The homies in the back tip the hats real low. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. Come on. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Everybody singing now. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Everybody singing now. Whoa. Everybody singing now. Whoa. Come on. Let's go. Whoa. 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 Hey, hey. A little louder. A little louder. Wow. Okay, come on, everybody. Why don't you clap your hands? White folks, do it on time if you can. Sounds good now, here's the plan. Let's all sing together like we in the same band. I'm the bomb and about to blow up. Ooh. I'm the bomb and about to blow up. Oh my god, I'm the bomb and about to blow up. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, now we about to take it on a whole new level. Grabbing the light on the run from the devil. Been downtown for too long. I feel the sun rising all up in my bones. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. I'm the bomb in about to blow up. Whoa. Whoa. Let's go! Whoa. 
all around the world. Whoa, huh, huh, huh. Whoa. Huh, huh, huh. Whoa. Hey, hey, a little louder. Uh, 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 a little louder. Do the dang, do the do the do the dang thing. Do the dang, do the do the do the dang thing. Erica D has to doodle now. She told me earlier she has to poo poo now. Woo! That was awesome. Uh, and calling out um, bathroom yeah. functions is always encouraged on snacky <laughs> totally too. Totally inappropriate. I'm not done eating my pizza yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, that is a great. That was great. Thank I you. wish I had more for you to bang on in here. I know you're looking for. It's all like oh, chairs and yeah, signs and everything. And I mean, maybe the outside would make a good metallic sound from uh-huh. the shipping crates. Uh, Very cool. Jonna, Jonna and P- pigeonettes. Mm-hmm. John and the pigeon pigeonettes. Pigeon. I like pigeon ladies. Pigeon, pigeon ladies. ladies is more crass, we think. More mm-hmm. crass. Mm-hmm. It's kind of right. like. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Reminds no, me no, of the pigeon more, lady. It's more like what? <laughs> you know the lady that sits in the park. Mary Poppins. Park, like, with the oh. pigeons covered, like covered shit in all pigeons. over. Mm. Yeah, that's us. That's us. <laughs> that's right. That, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need, I'm gonna need yeah, and a shaker. <laughs> um. I'm really excited about this because, you know, the the first time I heard you was 2006 and then put that great record and had some time off and now you came back with this. Uh, how do you think the direction has changed? Uh, I know that you made a, you want to make a softer record, but do you feel like the message has changed or do you think it's like an evolution? You have, since you always have such ties to your roots and where you started, mm-hmm. moving out to the West Coast is like a current theme. Like, how do you feel that you're expressing it this time around? Um, <clears throat> I would say... Um just I, I have no idea. Just trying to keep it uh, natural, and uh, I have no idea, man. God dang it! No, no good answer. No good answer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, now that you're, no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dressed like a goddamn hyena. <laughs> <laughs> I need a bath and a woman. Um, well, I know that you got your start in the Good Life Cafe. Yes. Uh, and it's such an integral part. I'd love for you to tell our listeners like the story of how you got started there and how you evolved into where you are now. Yeah. It was a great open mic that happened every Thursday night from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And like little community. It was in a health food store. And uh, it was just great because it was only one open mic in L.A. at that time. And, and uh, a lot of people rolled through. And this woman named B. Hall, she set it up and said no cussing, no B words and no disrespect and all that stuff with hip hop, it just didn't fit. So uh, I think we we were all smashed together and kind of, you know, learn how to um, try to style without um, a lot of crutches and stuff. So the good life was a great Jesus. Do you feel like those 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 rules uh, or those stipulations those are actually crutches in the music industry? Um, I think at that time she did it to kind of challenge us. We were Mm -hmm. kids and stuff, so I think it kind of worked. and for some reason, just kind of gel, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And now you're now you're here. Now now we're here. Yes. Um. So I know you're gonna play another song for us. Okay. And what is that? So gangster. So gangster. Oh, okay. You girls started off. Wait a second. Hold on. I love oh. this song. <laughs> Hold on. You shut your mouth. <laughs> there's a there's a form there's a format here that we follow. <laughs> Uh, not really, but I would love to know, uh, you know, because the, the title is, you know, appropriate. Well, you know, actually, I'll take that back. You're right. Let's play it, and then let's talk about it. Okay. Because I, be, I would have the only reference point besides you guys. Oh. Steve couldn't even have a reference point on this conversation. <laughs> I'm enjoying the pizza. You start it off. The music. Uh. I'm a gangster for real. What? I feel so damn gangster. Hmm? I'm a gangster for real. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. Oh my god. Mm. It's just one of those days. I feel the sun rise around me. Huh. All the clouds run away. Something funny's going on. Okay, now where's all the traffic? Is someone trying to clown me? Huh. Why do I feel fantastic? I'm used to things always going wrong, but now I'm a gangster for real. Huh. I feel so damn gangster. Huh. I'm a gangster for real. Ooh. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. 
I'm a gangster for real. Oh shoot. Uh, sitting in my backyard, looking at a little squirrel. I'm drinking some coffee. I feel like a whole different world. Plus, I got the bomb rhyme skills. I got Hawthorne backing me up. Huh. Plus, my wife looks good. I got butter soft seats all up in my trunk. Yep, yep, I'm banging some Depeche mode. Windows down so you can see the fresh mode. Yeah, my 6 foe is only a Nintendo. But I'm smashing fools on some Super Mario. Never picture myself sitting on some big dough. Used to be in Broken Six and Alvarado. I'm chilling at the back of the boat chewing tacos. I feel like young Sean Connery in Cabo. And now, I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. Show me how you feel. Come on. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. Oh, shoot, let's go. Okay, act like you in Cabo. Let me take you out. We'll go to Denny's on Vermont and we'll get waffles on the house. Yeah. Act like you in Cabo. Let me take you out. We'll go to Denny's on Vermont and we'll get waffles on the house. Watch the young Duke Ellington make the place gelatin Shake the fake fell again, I have the black gill again I keep seeking, keep preaching the seeds peaking Keep breathing, keep breathing the same reason I leak venom Every time I choose to spit them in that line hit them With an unusual rhythm that you never heard The similar words ever spoken forever hurt And those who oppose, I'm not joking Cause now, I'm a gangster for real I feel so damn gangster I'm a gangster for real I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. Let's go on a pleasure trip. Oh. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. I'm a gangster for real. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. You gotta rock to the beat that like this, uh. You gotta rock to the beat that like this, uh. You gotta rock to the beat that rock it to the beat. You gotta rock it to the beat that like this, uh. You gotta rock it to the beat that like this, uh. You gotta rock it to the beat that like this, uh. You gotta rock it to the beat to rock it to the beat. You gotta rock it to the beat like this. Get some. And then we explode. <laughs> yeah, we explode. And then we go. Yeah. <laughs> the pigeons go poop. That's just, <laughs> that's just <laughs> explode. The blur. Oh, sign weird. out the exploding pigeons. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fit them aspirin. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to know the thought, the process behind that song and, you know, what it's about. I know that you're a gangster. Oh. But, you know, it's not your traditional <laughs> gangster song. Um, I think I wanted to, you know, you know, it's the everyday man, you know, feeling good. Things just happen to be working out and... You know, the loser that made it kind of vibe. Uh, you know, the guy that got the job. The guy that got you the job. You feel good. You just got a new truck. Uh, you feel good. Roll the windows down. Uh, <laughs> you're the man. Just for 15 minutes or seven. Seven? Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I like it. It's kind of like an everyday man positivity song. But yes. that's what I really feel about your music is that your music is so positive. Mm. Uh, I know that you, you know, had, you sing about your music about, you know, coming up in uh, the neighborhood that you're in. And it was like... Not black enough, not white enough, mm -hmm. but all your music is like such a good, such a good look on life. Oh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I like that song so much because it's like, yeah, I got a haircut, it's yeah. awesome, and it like came out okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. You know what? You already won. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what? What is up next? You have your show tonight in New York at Irving Plaza. Yes, well, I'm opening up for DJ Shadow. Amazing. And then tomorrow at the Brooklyn Bowl. I just played so, there on Saturday. Whew. I've it's, never been. You've never been? Never. Mm, neither. Oh, they... This is not because... Uh, well, I can only say this. They take really good care of artists. Oh, nice. That's all I can nice. say. They all take... Right. They'll feed you. They'll get you drinks. The staff is really awesome. It's This building is... It's like a... It's a venue, restaurant, bowling alley. Mm. All, all at the top of its... Uh, oh, each wow. one operating at the top of its mm. game. Nice. So it's really good. Some bowling tomorrow. I can only recommend... Um, I can't recommend highly enough the fried chicken there. Fried chicken? <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> All right. We uh, like fried chicken. But it's really yeah. good. And then where are you um, off to after New York? After New York, we go to uh, Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, no? No. No, no, no I was just oh. chewing in the microphone. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Still eating That's pizza fine. over here. Yeah, we got a lot of pizza. Yes. And then you mentioned that you're off to Europe in December. In December, go to France, and then uh, tour in 
uh, France in April. That's amazing. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so I've never been, so. It's wonderful. Oh, my God. I went to summer for the first time. Fresh wine, cherries, lawns, women, dreams. I can't wait. Yeah, that's pretty much. I can't wait to fall in love. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Underneath the Eiffel Tower. Oh, my God. Make it as cliche as, as just as cliche as trashing <laughs> the hotel room, yeah. as Steve mentioned. <laughs> just drink a bottle of wine, have a loaf of bread, eat some cheese, and fall in love ah, with the Cha 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 cha. That's the. Uh, those are the two cliches. Wake up that, with a tummy ache and then make a bloody mary. Yeah, mm. there, there it is. There you go. Mm. Uh, so where can you where can you get the record? Uh, you can get it local record stops or um, iTunes. iTunes. Yeah, or buy it directly from pigeonjohn.com or quantum.com. Perfect. Yeah. Are you on the Twitter? Easy. Yeah, 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 I'm on the Twitter. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, so we got one more song. It's ruined my life, man. Ruined it. Oh, my God. Can't so much. It's like drunk texting to the world. <laughs> yeah. And you can really get into I something. I just started one last night. Mm. Started my first tweet. Did my first tweet. What Congratulations. It said, I just puked in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we are going to close the show on that. <laughs> What is the last? And uh, you're gonna play the uh, song that I started off the show with for us. Yes. And uh, you want to just talk about the inspiration behind that song? Yeah. Um, excuse me. I'm a huge Farside fan, and so I always like that sample that they used on um, "Who is the Negro in Charge over here? Who is the Negro in Charge?" Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think it's just a freaking excuse me. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of bullshit. But um, but I like the song though. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, cool. Let me let me sign this out. This is the last thing we're gonna do. This is the final format. I want to thank Steve, the author of Mosh Potatoes, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, book out tomorrow. Uh, everywhere. Pigeon John's record. Dragon Slayer out everywhere. Thank you. Pigeon ladies, thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank and you so uh, much. big shout out to Roberta's, Jack and Z and Rectech, who are producers for making this sound good. And uh, we will be back next week with uh, Suckers live in studio. Suckers. Wow. Yeah. Okay, hello everybody, won't you take a seat and listen close Today is a story about a young man that you seem to know Born in Omaha, then later his mom moved to the West Coast Inglewood to be exact, and I was a shock in fact folks Neighborhood pyrus will roll up and cruise and try to jack him He would try to make them laugh and pop like do a backspin Sometimes they would stall him out, and other times he would be scrapping This made him into a man to never back down when attacked And now... Excuse me, can I be myself? And spit it like no one else. I think I got a story to sell. Well, maybe you better make room. Excuse me. Maybe you better make room. Excuse me. Maybe you better make room. Excuse me. Maybe be better make room. Excuse me. Maybe you better. Can I break it down? Can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Okay, the little boy from Omaha grew tall Didn't have brains to do not at all Didn't have game, didn't know how to ball But he heard the melody and that was a call Didn't have a beat machine, had no gear How could he write the songs, make them hear? Moves everything that was a lockdown near Pause, mix it for the rest of the year Now he had beats, now he had rhymes But he wasn't good yet, took some time Went to the good life, open mic one night And saw that he wasn't very good at all Oh no. But he never stopped Trying. One night he blew it up, I'm not Trying. Ever since then the kid never stopped Trying. Still try to make him laugh, just keep dying Excuse me, can I be myself? And spit it like no one else. I think I got a story to sell. Well, baby, you better make room. 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 Baby, you better. Can I break it down? Can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Can I, can I break it down? Can I break it down? Okay. Woo! Listen close. Seems to know. West Coast. Uh, 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 uh. Um, well, 
Excuse me, can I be myself? And still it like no one else. I think I got a story to sell. Well, baby, you better. Yay! We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. This program is powered by Simplecast. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please... Join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening.